Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It has been exactly one month since I hard pruned down my Portulacaria afroforest. Let's see what it looks like now one month later. Here it is today. It's coming in nice and green and I really like the proportions of the trees. They're starting to look like the giant African baobabs, which I'm kind of styling them to look like. Here's a look at the main tree up close and you can see almost everywhere where I cut the tree back hard, it sprouted new growth, so that's really good. Here's a tree that wasn't quite so successful. I cut this main trunk off here and I have no new growth around this area. I do have growth on the other branch here, which is good. So in the future, I have two choices. I can wait for something to develop on this trunk and I found sometimes nothing does develop. They just kind of sit there dormant. So I could, uh, I could prune it off flush and just grow this as my new leader. I've got some buds developing in here, so the tree will live, no problem. It's just, might need a bit of restyling. Let's go in now up close and you can see the development of each tree. So we'll start with the main tree here. You can see all the shoots in here, all over the tree. It's looking really good. It's coming back really nicely. I'm, I'm really pleased. I was worried about this cut here, this major trunk here. I cut it off and I thought, oh, what if nothing grows? What if it's like the stump over here or nothing happens? Because that's kind of a major trunk line. But I did, I got a shoot each side of that, which is really good. So I'll have the one trunk dividing into two. And generally over time, these new shoots will blend in with this trunk. They tend to develop quite quickly. So that's good. That's what happened last time I hard pruned this tree. Most of the other trees have done really well too. This tree, I did a hard prune here and here. It's recovered really nicely. This one, there's a stump out front here that didn't really grow anything, but I have lots of growth out the back. So again, I can either, you know, wait for something to develop on this side. Some people say try recutting it and maybe something will sprout, so I can try that. If not, I can restyle the tree using the side branch as my new apex. All the little cuttings I planted are doing well. There's another tree here I hard pruned. This one, nothing came out on that, but there's lots of other growth. And this one developed really nicely over here. A nice crown on the tree. So I'm very pleased with the results. I'm glad I did it. Uh, the night after I hard pruned it, I, I went to bed and I thought, oh my goodness, what did I do? These trees are all so old and I hard pruned them back and what if they don't respond? What if they just die or something? But they didn't. They recovered and once again, just like last time I hard pruned the trees, I'm really happy I did it because it's getting the nice baobab proportions, a great big thick trunk on it tiny tree with a nice upper branch structure. Something, as I said, I can develop into the future and just try and go for better and better proportions to create that look of a giant African baobab tree. Up until last year, I'd never tried growing real baobab trees. Everything I read online said they're really hard to grow, hard to germinate, um, hard to care for in the winter. Uh, some articles said you've got to pull the tree out of the pot hang it upside down in a dry area and overwinter it upside down with the roots exposed to the air. And so I never tried it. I thought I won't be successful because I've tried bonsai adeniums or desert roses and haven't had much success. So I never tried growing a baobab until last year. And so far I, I've had good luck with them. They've, they've overwintered fine. They lose their leaves. I don't water them in the winter. I keep them indoors in the plant room and once the new leaves come out in spring I start slowly increasing the water. When it's nice and hot and sunny out in the summer you give it lots of water. You water it like a regular tree and I, I found so far they've been doing really well. So let's go have a look at them now. I've got some that I started this year and some from last year. We're starting into the cool weather at nights now. Last night got down to 12 degrees Celsius and tonight we're going even lower to 8 degrees Celsius which is getting pretty cool for baobab. 
Uh, everything I've read recommends you keep them at 15 degrees Celsius or above, which is, you know, fairly warm. So I've moved my baobabs into the greenhouse here. So here they are. So the back ones, these back two here, those are the ones I started last summer. So they're my tallest. They're growing really strongly, at least the one. The other ones stayed quite short. And these are the ones from this year. I've got one in a pot by itself here, and I've got another one here. And this one is the first tree to get a branch. You can see it dividing here. There's a branch off to this side, so really cool. As the baobab trees mature, they will eventually get a compound leaf similar to that of a chifflera. I'll show you the leaf on the chifflera. Here's my chifflera here, my Australian umbrella tree. So you can see the compound leaf, how it has five on this one, but they can get more. Here's one with three, six on that one. So that's what the baobab leaf will look like in the future. It'll get that kind of leaf cluster at the end or a compound leaf like that. Kind of exciting. So my baobabs here are developing fairly slowly. Um, there was a viewer who planted his baobab tree at about the same time I did, and his was like taller than his head. It was huge and it had a big trunk on it. My older ones here are starting to get a nice woody trunk on them. So this winter, I'll probably separate them. Once the leaves have fallen off, I'll separate them. I probably won't do any root pruning. Um, if I do, I'll pull them out of the pot and let the roots dry for a bit before I replant it in fairly dry soil for the winter. Uh, I want to separate these two trees, get them in probably a larger pot. I've got to look at the root system first. I don't want it too big a pot because then the soil stays moist for too long and it could rot the roots. So that's the plan anyway, is to maybe just check on the root system this winter on them. My Sarissa here continues to do well. It's uh, looking kind of cool. I like it in the new pot. I'll be turning the heat on in the greenhouse tonight. I've got a little heater and it'll keep it, it doesn't keep it too warm, but it'll keep it at probably uh, around 15 degrees Celsius tonight with the heater running in here. And that'll keep my baobabs here warm. And you know, everything I've recently repotted, it'll stay warm and growing rather than going dormant. Here's my ficus religiosa that I repotted recently. And you can see some of the older leaves have gone yellow and they'll be falling off soon. But all the newer leaves are still green. It's looking good. There's a nice green bud on it. So I, I think it'll survive no problem. My little one down here, still no results from that yet, but that, that'll probably take a while. I mean, I totally defoliated it. Uh, pruned it back hard and pruned the roots back fairly hard. So I just keep misting it Hopefully in the future little buds will form on it and it'll start growing again The other little ficus religiosa in Isabella's pot is doing really well The uh, winter jade here Still has one green leaf on it. It's looking good in the new pot The lithops are doing really well. I think they're getting taller some of them I don't know if you can see that in there. It's kind of getting taller. Still looking really nice and colorful, really healthy. Isabella brought me some new plants there, the aloe and the succulent. They're doing really well. My little tiny pencil cactus is looking really good there too. Happy with that. Really cool. I've got a lot of cuttings in here. I've got my almond tree got a lot of ficus religiosa cuttings in here uh, some climbing aloe cuttings what else do I have I think there's some French lilac cuttings in there Portugal carry afro cuttings in here uh, I've got these trees these were from Todd's tropicals uh, I forget what they are but they're growing really well so I've got those and then I've got over here I've these were the seed trays that had the horn beams in and nothing came up. So I started planting cuttings in here. 
So I think I have the gardenia cuttings, ficus cuttings, which are doing really well. They're starting to grow. These are the Benjamina cuttings. I've got all my mystery trees. Uh, someone wanted a close-up of them to try and identify them. So it's a heart-shaped leaf, kind of shiny on top. Uh, underneath, hmm, not as shiny as the top, but it's still kind of shiny underneath. And then at each division, there's kind of little, little leaflets growing or something. You can see how it grows up top. And yeah, and that's how they're growing. You can see the rest of them here. The leaves are getting quite large on them. So I don't know. The uh, Jerusalem thorn trees are doing quite well. Yeah, they're growing well for me. I, I'm quite happy to get those. Uh, the Frank Yi jades here, the cork bark jades, doing really well. Um, I've noticed new growth on these cuttings now. So that means I've got almost all of the cuttings are surviving. There's only, I think, the one here that might die out of all those cuttings I got. So that's really good. I'm so pleased. Yeah, that's going really well. Uh, my ficus lorata cutting back here, I've noticed some more green leaves up top on it, so it's doing really well. I think that'll have a lot of green leaves on it soon. The two ficus benjaminas, the two little leaf one, and the other one in there, if you can see in there, did really, really well after the repotting. They just, they're just starting to grow now, and they're growing really exploding in growth almost so that's good they don't need to be in the greenhouse here anymore but uh, i'm just keeping them in here to baby them i guess until they get firmly established yeah i've got some brazilian rain tree cuttings back here for bonsai j he'll be visiting uh in september so that'll be exciting so i might he can take some of these mystery trees some jerusalem thorns um, maybe some ficus religiosa cuttings, Portula cari afra. I think he has those trees. I think this is a coral berry tree in here too. Yeah, so I'm going to have to really give away a lot of stuff because I'm really worried that I won't be able to fit all these tropical trees inside the plant room and the basement this winter. I'm quite worried. Oh dear, what have I done? I've also got my guava tree in the greenhouse here and it's growing really tall I've uh, here's the base of it way down here so it's getting quite thick it's about the thickness of my baby finger now and this is grown from a seed by young in our club and he gave it to me I think it was two years old when he gave it to me and I've had it probably three or four years now so it's getting up there it's got this nice bark that exfoli exfoliates on it. Kind of cool. So I've let it grow for the entire summer. And now that summer's coming to a close, I'll prune it back hard before I bring it into the plant room. And the reason I have it in the greenhouse here is that it's grown so tall that when the wind blows, it tips the pot over. So that's why it's in the greenhouse. It's just uh, having a spa day in here just to save it from the wind. The Bougainvillea, this is a cutting off Julian's one, is still flowering really nicely. Beautiful color flowers on it. I really like those kind of pale purple colors, pinkish purple. Really cool. And my other one that flowered all summer is beginning to flower again. Getting flowers all over it. Here, 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 back here. So that's pretty cool too. The solar powered fans have just turned off. I guess I'm standing in front of the solar panels too much. They were on when I came in here, but it's getting dark out now. So yeah, the sun will be setting soon. So even though it gets really cool at nighttime, it's still very warm in the daytime. We had 25 degrees Celsius today. So I still have to keep watering all my trees. They dry out at the end of each day. So I've just finished watering them all. So they're all good for tonight and tomorrow morning and they're all doing quite well 
This crown of thorns just keeps flowering the entire summer. Amazing. Fantastic plant for bonsai. There's the lychee tree. The leaves are starting to come out more now. And they're starting to be more of a compound leaf. In the early stages, they were just sort of, you know, a couple of leaves at the end of each, you know, petiole. And now I'm getting sets of compound leaves on them, which is really cool. So I think, you know, this is gonna get a fairly big canopy by the end of summer and that'll be pretty cool. It'll grow fast once it gets all that foliage up top. Very exciting. My mulberry seedling that I just dug up from the yard here has done really well. I gave it a root pruning before I planted it. I gave it a top pruning and it's recovered nicely and it's growing in really well. So that's going to make a nice bonsai in the future. And it was free, which is pretty cool. And I've always wanted a mulberry. I've just never come across one and they're right in my yard, right by the bonsai area, a little seed, seedling grew. So that's cool. We do have a mulberry tree in the backyard. It's quite a large one. Here's the front of my Austrian pine. It's really thick. It's well developed, all the needles, very dense. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, the roots are keep getting better on this tree. Really happy with the root base on it. It's pretty cool. I think this tree, you know, as it gets older in the future, it'll become better and better, I hope. I guess it is now, but it's still got a long way to go before it's, you know, a really spectacular tree. But hopefully it'll get there. Over here is my ficus benjamina, the franken ficus or fusion ficus, where I planted a cutting, one of the cuttings off this tree on top of the trunk because the whole top of the tree died off in the cold. So I'm trying to restore it to its original glory. And it's done really well this summer. Uh, I'll show you a photograph of it. I think I did it in December, the hard pruning. Anyway, it was last winter. So I'll show you a picture of that now or a little video of it. And you can compare it to what it looks like now, which is incredible that it's the same tree. I'm back here behind the camera looking at the tree now. And to me, it's looking really beautiful. It's, uh, it's getting a nice branch structure. Uh, it's sort of, it gives me a real banyan feel to it. And I think, you know, once the foliage fills in, I can get the tree a little shorter up top, get some front growth coming. I think it's going to look really good. I'm, uh, I'm really pleased. I think, you know, from a tree that, you know, didn't have much hope there when the top dried off of it. And I was left with kind of a trunk with a few branches and, yeah, it was looking pretty grim then, but it's been resurrected as the Franken ficus. And I, I, I'm so pleased with it. I, I, think, I think it's coming along really nicely. You can see on some of those upright uh, branches where I prune them off, how it's starting to get a bit of a curve to the inside corner of the bend now. It's starting, ficuses tend to smooth out as they grow older, so any 90 degree corners, they start to blend in and become smoother. So yeah, it's, and this tree slowly, slowly becomes smoother and it's got a long way to go, but it's, I'm happy with its development. I think it's making good progress. Yeah, so there's the tree today now, getting a fantastic root system on it, looking really good. The cutting there is starting to fuse in with the original trunk and that fusion will just get better as the tree gets older. And it's just got tons of new growth on it. Just unbelievable. So it just shows, you know, if you have a strong root system on your tree, it's nice and healthy, you can cut them back hard. Usually. All my hard prunings were successful except for my ficus root over temple. So it's not dead, but it's very weak. So let's have a look at that now. Here it is here. So you can see, I cut it back hard and everything died off on the top. 
this one branch out front lived and it got a lot of new growth on it but it hasn't grown vigorously over the summer not like my other ones so I'm kind of worried I'm looking behind here um, there is a section up the back here that rotted but now it's starting to heal so you can see there's dead wood coming up here so there's only a fairly thin live vein on it that's alive so as long as that stabilizes which I think it is now and starts growing with vigor it'll eventually repair itself this tree and I can carve away all the dead wood on it and hopefully restore it because that's the branch I wanted to live was the one coming forward because in the past the apex was back here and it was kind of going away from you so yeah, so that's a hard pruning that wasn't that successful, but I haven't given up on the tree yet. I'm hoping it uh, continues to recover and get better as it gets older. My asparagus fern is doing really well. In the wintertime, I had it up against a wall and nothing grew on the one side of the tree. So this time, I, over the summer, I had this side facing the sun and everything's growing in quite evenly now. And it'll be ready for a pruning soon. And to make it more tree-like because right now it kind of well it kind of looks like my hair doesn't it it's a sprawling mess <laughs> so that'll need pruning to get it looking like a tree again my royal oaks or my english oaks here are doing really well you can see they're still pushing out a bit of new growth on it you can see the red part there yeah i've uh had to pick you know suckers off the trunk a couple of times to keep the trunks nice and clean and develop, you know, a clean looking trunk line. Um, yeah, they're doing really well. I, I can't complain. You know, these are young trees and I think they have all the potential in the world to grow up into fine bonsai. Here's a look at my Mars project and you can see that the aloe in here is doing really well. This is the main aloe plant pup that I planted in there and it's got all kinds of new branches or trunks growing out of the soil, the Martian simulant. So I'm just looking, oh, we're starting to get a bit of algae on the soil now, on some of the soil particles. So at first the soil just, I think it was very toxic. But now, you know, with fertilizer and water, I think it's starting to support life. Well, you can see the aloe is doing really well in it. So that's kind of good. Um, just shows you can grow plants in Martian simulant or Martian soil. Jonathan gave me a whole bunch of the black spruce seedlings last year and they overwintered quite well and I planted that bog forest with them and I kept a bunch of them just in case my bog forest, some of them didn't survive the root pruning and repotting, but they all did. So that was good. I gave away some to the community gardens for their edible forest because you can eat spruce tips uh, some are planned for the First Nations garden and I gave away some to Isabella and to Connor who visited so I'm down to one tree left now and I think I'll grow this one as a, a single tree as sort of a specimen tree uh, develop into a bigger one than the bog forest those will be kept quite small so just see what I can turn it into. My nightshade vine is doing really well. It's kind of glowing in the sun right now. Yeah, still has the berries back here. Growing really well. The trunk is thickening up on it slowly. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. I hope it goes through this winter fine. This will be its, if it makes it through this winter, it'll be going into its third growing season, which is pretty exciting. And I have no idea how long you can keep these vines alive for. Uh, we'll find out. If it overwinters fine, we'll give it another season of growth. My Scots pine root over rock has done really well this summer. I, uh, I hard pruned it back kind of late spring, hoping I might get another flush of growth this year, but I didn't. Uh, they are a single flush species, which means they only push out growth once a year. But I was hoping because all the vigor I had in it, maybe it would put out a second flush, but it, it didn't. They will in some 
climates, but I think our season's too short here. It does, however, have tons of buds all over it. Everywhere, everywhere where I pruned it, there's new buds coming out and it'll be quite exciting to see it in spring with all the new growth on it. I think it'll look quite nice and quite dense, I think. My cathedral style Thuja occidentalis or Eastern white cedar has done really well this year. You can see there's some good strong growth up top, bit of a rocket branch there. Yeah, it's doing quite well, lots of foliage. So I'll have to prune it back again once it goes dormant get it ready for the spring season. But yeah, I really like this tree. It's exciting growing this. And like I said, this is this was a collected tree, but I basically stripped all the lower branches off of it and totally restyle it from a kind of a low spreading tree to more of an upright old growth style. And so I'm, even though it's collected, I'm growing most of the tree and it'll take many years before it starts to look really good but I really, really like the tree. My wife has a mulberry tree that she started two years ago, was it? Mm, yeah. Two years ago. And you can see how tall it is. It's growing really well. So yeah, she's going to prune it to keep it a small tree so you can reach all the berries from the ground or at least, you know, a small ladder maybe. She doesn't want it to grow too tall or it shades everything out here. So she'll have to learn some bonsai techniques to keep that pruned back and under control. Here's a close-up look at all the mulberries that are forming on it. They're pretty green right now, but they'll turn into a nice berry eventually. And they're one of my favorites, mulberries. I love them. In my wife's greenhouse here, she has finally gotten some fine looking grapes. So in the corner here, you can see all the grapes she's got growing. She has to grow them inside here or all the squirrels and birds and that tend to pick them all off. So that's why she grows everything in a greenhouse or a greenhouse. Her peach tree back here has done really well this summer. You can't see much of it because there's a big squash growing up in its way, but it's doing really well. So she's gonna prune it back a little shorter once it's dormant for the winter. Here's a look at the footings for my new glass greenhouse. Dried nicely, no problems. So the next step I think will be to dig out the soil in the middle, put plastic down and I'll put a nice bed of gravel in there eventually for the floor of the greenhouse. It's getting quite cool out so I'm going to go in and turn the heat on in the greenhouse now. Keep it nice and warm for tonight. Okay, the heat is on. So let me just check the temperature now. So I'm at about 16 or 17 degrees Celsius, which is, uh, it's about 62 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll keep track of what's going on. We'll come back out here later tonight and have a look and check on the temperature. The sun has set and it's quite cool out now. I'm just gonna go in the greenhouse and check what temperature it's holding in there. I've got my grow lights on so I can see the thermometer. It is, uh, it's about 16 degrees Celsius or about 51 or 52 Fahrenheit. So not bad in here, feels, feels nice in here. Well, it's definitely nighttime now. Let's go in and check on the temperature of the greenhouse, which is now a purple house, and see how warm it is. Okay, I'm in, oh, it feels nice in here. Oh, it's really nice. Let me check the temperature. So the temperature in here is about 14 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit, so quite pleasant. It's actually really nice in here. What a beautiful evening out here. But it is going down to 8 degrees Celsius tonight. That's pretty cold. It's just a beautiful quiet evening out tonight. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me 
in the bonsai zone.